the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. The distance between you and the next level of your life is a relationship. Who knows you matters in the school of success. Who you meet matters. Who likes you matters. Are we together now? These are the mysteries that many well-meaning believers do not know. They do not understand. And so we pray in tongues. We fast. We are um, excited. But then we fail woefully in almost every other area of life. I said a few things about relationships. Um that I think is important we pay attention to. I said how that relationship is an investment. The same way you invest in stocks, the same way you invest in agriculture, the same way you invest in your shop, the same way you invest in education, that is how you invest in relationships. It will cost you. Are we together now? Relationships will cost you your ego. Relationships will especially from the part of the one who is the chief recipient there are many people whose arrogance will not allow them invest in quality relationships that will build and jimmy used to say that one of the um, greatest things that can happen to a man is to partner with a man who is building something great 50 naira invested in a quality relationship today can give you an estate tomorrow what an investment there are many foolish believers who are not part of anybody's success story. There is no future for a man who is not part of anybody's success story. Someone should be able to say you discerned the grace of God upon him and stretched a right hand of fellowship when the rest could not see it. My life is blessed today by the grace of God because I, have, I, I was able to discern people, discern potentials, discern greatness even when the the custodians of those virtues did not know it see there are certain things you do that will pay you for life one of it is discerning greatness and investing in it through quality relationships i gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life these were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results and today i owe them partnership to make sure they succeed regardless of what their personal failures are they are the risk they took to believe in me is a debt that i must pay for a lifetime who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship muslims have this they know this they excel overnight because of the capacity to discern many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach God directly, we don't need men. You will always need men for as long as you are alive. Make reference to my teaching, the gift of men. You need relationships. I told us relationships are advantageous connections. Advantageous connections. There are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it. I hope that that grace worked for you during the week. Because there are relationships that are going nowhere complete um, you have to be connected you have to be connected in ministry you have to be connected strategically in business you have to be connected we call it networking in politics you have to be connected you ask honorable here he will tell you you cannot rise no matter what God told you that is your business but as far as impact is concerned god told me i'll be great thank god he didn't tell everybody he told you you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision 
relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was he needed men and so he was able to invest in them regardless of their failures he watched them as they stumbled they fell relationship is not about perfection relationship is about understanding you must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship replace perfection with sincerity of heart are we learning now please pay attention to what i'm teaching you this is not one of the ways people become great this is the way people become great you can earn a living through relationships there are people who are not doing anything you look at them and you think they are they are occultists or they deal in drugs they have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail they can sit down at home yet they are all thank you they thank you pays them salary every month without retirement god is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow it's a lesson i learned from my father like i told us last week my father knows somebody almost everywhere if it's an armed robber he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required are we together now if it's for discount for fertilizer somebody somewhere he knows someone in the ministry of agri if it's to help you bring your car from Kotono, there is somebody he knows. What a wise way of living. I watch relationship pay many bills for my father. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you use only money to pay for everything in life, everything in life is bought, but money is not the only currency. Integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances trust me when i say this someone will not give you money but he will give you what you would have bought with the money he gave you two things access and he took away pain from your life are we together now we must trust God for grace to be able to access quality relationships. One of the points that I did not mention last week that I, I think that I must stress before we continue is what I teach in the school of ministry. I teach our school of ministry students. Um, I call it the fundamental law of human relations and it's important. I'm going to state it. I want you to understand there is a key to attracting people to your life it is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man you must know it and the highest psychological need of any man at all including you any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued or valuable and the need to feel appreciated please write it down any man will die to see this happen in his life the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel appreciated. Please write it down and let's talk a little about that. Because many believers think that just because you are born again, relationships will happen overnight. No. People have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships. And in the body of Christ, we have this ugly way of saying, I don't need anybody. I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism. Somebody must recommend you somewhere. Are we together now? Come, my dear. Come too. Now, everybody, I want you to give them a round of applause. Smile while you are doing that, two of them. I will tell you why. Just clap for them generously and truthfully keep clapping don't stop this is for two of you now keep clapping 
I didn't ask you to stop. Praise God. God bless you. Now, watch them. What are they both doing? Or what were they both doing? Do you think if you ever tell them I'm a bad man, they will believe you? No. I satisfied in one minute the highest psychological need of any man. By this act, they don't even know what they did. But I gave them an impression of being loved. I gave them an impression of being valued. I gave them an impression of being appreciated. Brothers, let me give you a big secret. Do this, you are 50% gone to get a very good godly lady. Frown your face praying alone and I show you the way to misery regardless of spirituality. Yes. Time-tested, rock-solid principles. Are we together? The Bible says laughter. Listen, when two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. Not love. Love is still there. But laughter disappears. Every time there is restoration, it is backed up with laughter. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden, the Lord had turned again their captivity and all of that. You know, Sarah laughed. All who hear this will laugh with me. The ability to keep men loved the ability to keep men um, up, feel appreciated, the ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships. When you say this person is likable, whether consciously or subconsciously, their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they present a disposition to people that make them feel loved everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved and that location can be a human being they can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else they i'm not talking of flattery and lies by the grace of god we have a large workforce in this ministry i am I am intrigued. It never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry. And this is true from my heart. Truly speaking. You see, wise people are clapping. A politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this. But many people, that's why you are in, in the school of the spirit. Why do you think in campaigns, anybody just says anything and they clap? They are not clapping because they understand what was said. They know it's a key. It's a key to what you will go home with. It's a key to what you might lose. Never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery. At least not with your consciousness. There are some of us who have an ugly disposition towards people. This lady is so ugly. You are just seeing the person for the first time and you are acting that way. This lady is so slim. This lady is so plumpy. This lady is not, she can't even speak English. She's not my class. I show you the person who will pay for everything by himself. Because years to come, you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the, the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with, follow it and go out unwise decisions some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today cheap opportunities that they would have reason these are laws they will never be bent they will never change i came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence it affects your spiritual life and for a very long time i worked in that foolishness until i understood the kingdom now I'm a friend of every influential person. You can be in the world and not be of the world. You can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system. The chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general. You touch me, two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. Yeah. For sure. There are many well-meaning men of God 
who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land they spend 200 million naira buying the land investing to raise it to its foundation someone comes and put a big x no prayer will change it it remains there the prayer needs a man the angels roam around the earth did you apply a law that authorizes us to walk where is the human vessel we will speak to there's no one but you are a prayer warrior you see no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another they complement are we together now you have relationships you don't pray you will suffer no spirit talks to any man nobody helps you but you can pray you can fast you are a, a student of the word but you don't have strategic connections Jesus was a man who understood this principle when it was time for him to get into Jerusalem he said go there's somebody who has a coat if he asks you tell him the master has need of it the man did not refuse connections are we together now Jesus had relationships he had people he could send do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty David was a great man ordained to be king anointed but his anointing could not help him he was in a cave called Adulam until relationships came certain men came and they vowed they said David we will make sure you are king what if they were lying to kill him the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor don't forget that scripture in the multitude of men not gold not silver in the multitude of men access to the hearts of men gives you true honor access to the hearts of men gives you true honor are we together now value relationships don't lose relationships to look for money that's that's not wisdom don't lose relationships to look for job look for opportunity it's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising you will be blessed by association a message i preached in 2008 that a man can be blessed by association god called abraham alone and lot went with him how did lot get blessed not by any personal revelation as god lifted abraham he lifted him relationships how did jo joseph come out of the pit he, di uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough gift alone could not bring him out there was a relationship he established with a wine presser it was the wine presser that told the king i remember my wrongs two years ago there was a man who interpreted my dream he said go and fetch him the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i'd like you to pray in one minute bless your darlings and say lord give me the gift of men strategic alliances valuable connections that can become keys let my life not become a padlock to many valuable relationships please pray Lord let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity let me not fight alone hallelujah please sit down there a particular man of God was sharing his encounter with Bishop Oyedepo he used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work doing a great work for God and when he went to his father in the Lord Bishop Oyedepo and said that sir what one advice will you give me he said Bishop Oyedepo told him the interpreter you know I'm, I'm giving the English interpretation but he told him in Yoruba he said young man never fight alone you will not win did you hear what he said never fight alone nobody fights alone ask David David went alone but he didn't fight alone he said you come against me with your spares and all but I come against you in partnership to a name relationship every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships when you see a man mysteriously wealthy people don't say this guy has a brain they say he has gone somewhere he fraternized with someone let's hurry up walk with relationships 
and you will be amazed at the doors they will open only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire statistically confirmed the distance between you and your prayer request is not just a destiny helper away but statistically speaking somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's how naman was healed a little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received this miracle hallelujah law number two take notes if you can get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of god is the law of value another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value exodus chapter 4 verse 2 exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you're with me shout amen god bless you please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you i know that you are not having the best of conditions but trust me what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others praise the lord the law of value he says and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod verse 2 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground it became a serpent and moses fled before it go to verse 2 that's just verse 2 that's what i wanted and the lord said unto him what is it in your hand and he said a rod it is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing are we together what do you have in your hand that was the weapon that moses used god will always use what is in your hand he will anoint you but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand the anointing needs a physical channel to find expression and the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands in second kings chapter 4 verse 2 second kings chapter 4 verse 2 a woman was dying they are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not um they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift your ability is your difference and creates your rewards your value is your difference and it creates your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time 
to feed 5,000 people. Nothing produces a harvest of nothing. And Jesus said, look, I can't do anything. Go and look for bread. He said, feed them. They said, we don't have anything. Even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them. And then Andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish. And he brought it. And the Bible says, Jesus lifted it and gave thanks. God anoints your gift. He does not anoint nothing. You have to understand this. There are many people angry at God, angry at government, angry at parents, spouses, angry with themselves, not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him. The day you decide to pay attention to the law of value, that day you are ready to exit failure, you are ready to exit suffering. Value. Your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable it's that you've not done anything with it because he gave on to one five he gave on to one two he gave on to one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you and i wrote something down here i says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud. There are many people who sit down and just wish that things change. They get angry at every rich man. They get angry at every successful man. And they think everyone is diabolic. Everyone is a crook. No, no. Your value sets you apart in the school of greatness. Your value sets you apart in the school of success. Please learn this. The difference between you and any man you admire is value redefined. Value refined, sorry, I meant to say. Value refined. Enough to be identified and pursued. Dr. Mike Mudok said, a problem is an invitation for reward. The problems around you are God inviting you to come and step to a greater level every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be, you will receive the king's daughter for a wife. Two, he and his family will be exempted from tax. Three, he will be given great riches and honor. And David said, that's a deal. Let me teach you a great mystery. Never fight any battle till you know what the reward is. There are foolish battles without rewards. You sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward. Never fight any battle until you know what the reward is. Is God helping us? I teach our school of ministry students um, certain things. And let me, let me just borrow this from one of the... Um, I teach them this under finance. Until there is a problem that you can solve, you are unnecessary. Write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority. The key to what we call complex. This bitterness and hatred we have towards great people. There is nobody that was born to just be.
be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary if you are not sick you don't need Benny Hinn if you are not foolish you don't need Mike Modoc. are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true i see many things in my life i cannot do for myself and i'm shocked how much i pay for it and i'm surprised and almost um, sad that i will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true yes away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of god with crowds god has honored them and they are angry so 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 man of god so 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 church it's not all about the crowd do you think people are idiots a man can be stupid but a crowd cannot be stupid are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagle will gather eagles are wise people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this I made up my mind I would never harass God over my my destiny again because I knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known I will share other laws if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million all of a sudden you didn't need to hear kirk franklin you took don Moen. he never sleeps he never slumbers and all of a sudden you now found out that ah, this is why this man is blessed you that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it what a time we live in where there is a need for everything everything good or bad there is a need of course we are believers you don't do bad things but i'm saying every good and perfect gift has a need on it value value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity get out of failure there are people like bishop td jakes uh, i was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings the rings of their designer the rings that they make and I mean millions everything God gave you is an advantage Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright she proved that she was bright later on her beauty took her to the throne it's an advantage Samson could kill 
the lion and all of that is an advantage everything in your life do not allow men especially church people to destroy your gift now you must be guided to use it especially sensitive gifts there are gifts that are very sensitive and if not guided you will lose your work with God just to get money however there is nothing God gave you that is for waste are we together now thank you your destinies are the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem solving abilities be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and I guarantee you, you will never be ignored. At best, you will be criticized by ignorant people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent, but not to be ignored. Be a master at solving something. You must solve a problem. Don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day, one day it go better. That's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Don't sit down and wish and hope and wait. You stand up and create it. There are people who see men of God and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought, the influence, the prosperity and all of that, and people get angry. You know, people just look at a man of God and say, if a man of God is preaching the gospel and then you are this blessed, you see, if you are ignorant, just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for God to help. When you spread it, you implicate yourself the more. The Bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise. There is no man of God who is blessed because he's preaching. Every man of God is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are spiritual in their context but they are supernatural. Now you see God's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free for as long as there is a dispensing of value, you must be rewarded. That's why a preacher will not charge you for anything. Yet God will reward him. I will never beg for bread. It's not pride. It's the truth. Because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved. For as long as there is one sick body to be healed. For as long as there is one mind to be transformed. For as long as there is one person desire of, us, of an encounter. I remain valuable. That's why the Bible says when you see darkness covering the earth. Rejoice. Your light has come. It's time for you to shine. The presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species. And nobody will push you out like that. Say I am valuable. Shout it I am valuable. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I take responsibility and I create a desirable future by solving problems. Every job advertisement is a declaration of need by that company. We need a secretary. What they are trying to tell you is that we have seen a deficiency in our services. We need to outsource intelligence. Whoever can qualify for that receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say it depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant, one side is carpentry, one side they are selling food, another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things. You must be specific. Your value brands you. It helps everybody know when to need you. There is nobody you see who does only what they are known for. But like the door to a house. Every house has what you call a master door. Everybody say a master door. It is the master door that gives you access to other doors. If the master door is closed, you cannot access the door to the kitchen. You can't access the door to the toilet. So there are other potentials, but there is one that will bring you to notoriety. Are we together now? Learn this. 
don't just tell people I can do everything. I, then it means I don't need you. I don't need you. If I want to sing, I need the worship team. If our sound is bad, it's us begging the technical, help us. If we need order, we need the protocol department. If we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms, we need the media department. Any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry. The day the need arises, we create it. Just like you. You roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you. When Jesus showed up, the Bible says in the book of Mark, 1, 2, 3, when you read, it said, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. They don't seek you just because they love you. The world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals. Whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction. Miles Munro, Dr. Miles Munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it. He said, during, um, now let me use it in our context, Nigerians, when it is rainy season, everybody starts looking at a mango tree, happy and expectant. The same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything. But the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruits start coming out. Are we together? People come and they can climb trees and do everything. You know, I had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things. You would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems, you come and meet them and say, I thought I told you, let's negotiate. And you refused. Now there is a problem and you need us. Here are the terms. May you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much. That you are so valuable. Be as valuable as oil. Look at oil during scarcity. When you want to put fuel, gas, you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now i aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for from uh, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free yogurt for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value i learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of god's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of god the agenda of god and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me 
I receive grace to work on myself. Don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people. My father didn't do this. My mother didn't do this. Outside, inside, online, pray. Make me valuable. Make me valuable. So valuable. Shakata baladaba. In the area of designs, make me valuable. As a tailor, let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers. Give me grace to be valuable. Grace to be valuable. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Never forget this. Your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and god is stepping supernaturally we were designed to live by principles principles a miracle is god's intervention but you cannot you can get miracle money but you don't you don't live with miracle money you live with principles you can get the act of God's mercy step into your life in a season. But if you want to be great, it has to be by laws. Are you getting blessed? The Lord is leading us. He's helping us. You may look weak now, but take what I'm saying seriously and watch your life grow. Follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you. Like the animals came helplessly to the ark of Noah. You may not believe me, but believe the truths I am teaching. Hallelujah. The third law that I want to teach you, connecting with the second law now, wherever we can stop tonight, there's a lot to cover, is the law of competence and excellence. The law of value talks of recognition of what you have. But the law of excellence, competence and excellence, the fourth law that governs God's success systems. Please listen carefully. Proverbs 22, 29. Please give it to us media very fast. The law of competence. Everybody say competence. Say excellence. One more time. Say competence. Say excellence. Now if you are a believer, read that scripture projected. Let's read together. One, two, read. Seest thou a man, uh -huh, diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. No specific person. No specific person. Seest thou a man, not the man, any man. Any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining is is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level excellence means to surpass ordinary standards i read a book years ago called the enemy an enemy called average by john mason I think that was 2005 or so and that book changed my life forever because you see many of us especially Africans were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity and when we give our lives to Christ 
sometimes if not correctly taught we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity mediocrity means living in a common realm having no passion for surpassing the ordinary there is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great it may not be bad but it will not bring you to greatness the law of competence write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days you see us sing this song we're on our way to better days it's not just a special number it's the truth we're on our way to better days have you learned to use that magnet called excellence discovering your potentials obeying the law of value is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials that is important but alongside the law of value knowing your difference is not alone enough building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we're talking about um someone was over i think he was the head of department uh, media he was over at my place and um you know he was served a very sumptuous very very sumptuous meal and you know i was just watching him serving himself and helping himself adding this adding that adding chicken adding fish adding this and i was watching him and then i told him i said if this were a restaurant how much will you pay and then he looked i i, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight listen please help me with this how much is this 20 naira let's say 100 naira let's use a round figure this is 100 naira will you pay 1000 naira for this i'm not talking of free will donation will you go to a shop and pay 1000 why what will you say if i sell this 1000 to you it's too much because you feel that this is valuable but not to that degree is that true if your school fees is 30000 you may not complain even if you complain you may just pay it there is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there i know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and no, no no sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third time say that's how we are in this school automatically 
you already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child there are times that the prices of things are high but we are happy paying for them because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you is that true yes competence reject mediocrity write it down I reject mediocrity. You have to write it. Personalize it. Don't say we reject. This is not a corporate thing. You must reject it personally. There are many believers who are not competent. Apostle, I make hair. Pray for my, my, um, my, what, what they call, my salon. Someone comes to your salon, you burn their hair, you charge high, you finish late, you are frowning heat is killing them there and close to close to the um the television is one bottle of anointing oil there very dirty dusty around dirty place the gutter is smelling there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter and you say please pay 100 naira for it and the person say what what is your idea of me just because i came to spend three hours to make my hair Praise God. People have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality. Let me tell you, not everyone is afraid of quality. There are people who have conquered price. What they are looking for is quality. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Oh, but if I put quality, everybody around my area cannot pay for it. You don't need everybody. One person can equal 200 mediocre. One person who likes you. Pastor David Ibiome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes, they will collect measurement of 11 and sold 13. He said they, they will never return back to him again. But then one, they would sew three clothes, the same measurement. One would look as if, you know, and then the other one, he said, what sort of people are you? You are not competent. And some of them were members of his church. He said, no, I love you, but I can't use you. Then he found somebody who charged twice the price. And he looked at the person. And he said, why are you charging twice the price? And the person says, sir, I know what I can deliver, according to him. And he says, okay, I'm impressed. Let me give you a trial. He said, when he came back with that clothes, David Ibiome said, that's it. You are the one who will sow my traditionals. Now, one David Ibiome is worth some cities. I think I like that kind of business. Why labor to get two, two, two naira from everybody when I can get one million from one loyal person? Don't allow environment make you compromise on quality because impressions, impressions, impressions are important. You give a negative impression about your shop the day you change, people will still think you are like yesterday. You now went for a three months tailoring school. And now you have become a pro tailor. But everybody looks at you and says, don't waste your time going to that woman. Do you know, God is my witness. I once saw a wedding cloth, Ejimi. Wedding, a lady's wedding gown. I never would believe they sold that thing in Nigeria. I thought it was maybe, you know, London School of Tailoring or one of these um, Gucci or Versace and all of that. And they told me a, the tailor made a tailor in the north here. I mean, with with a level of precision. Now, those people are not noisemakers. You may not see them on Facebook, but they are the types. If you call them, they don't even pick your call. If you are ready to spend five hundred thousand on a wedding gown, get to them. In a year, they they sew for hundred people only. They are building estates and other people are there saying, say, it depends on your level, which type. If you want for 10,000, I can sew. And then a night to the wedding, that's when they bring it. And it's raining. You can't wash it. They bring a white wedding gown that is smelling fabric, is bad, is torn. They say, you know, they, you didn't finish paying yourself. You, you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing 
being excellent to one person is the same as attracting hundred people the money you will use to attract hundred people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome everybody say excellence look at me there are many of us right now what you are writing on what you are writing on is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly that is a piece of paper is an issue but the discipline to just tear it and create synergy you don't have that patience you just tear everything and you are writing something that will change your destiny you're not excellent you see excellence is a culture it starts from your life you don't try to pretend it outside you eat you don't wash the plate you are not excellent you wash the plate you don't throw away the dirty water you are not excellent you use the same soap to bath wash clean mop or the same rag your sponge case for your shoe you are not excellent are we together don't laugh at anybody god is speaking to you you enter to bath like i was teaching school of ministry students some of you bath in one minute you they ask you a question you are answering it while you are bathing you will think you are flushing the toilet you just hear Shua! and you are out no you are not excellent sir you are not excellent are we together wearing one boxer for two weeks you are not excellent wearing one ton singlet smelling it to see if it's still usable you are not excellent ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent are we together you are laughing ask those who this thing has cost them so much do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around they have to call you madam come and clean this table now you just send one lady who frowns around comes out as if everybody has offended her just pushes the rug across the table <laughs> pours the water on you and goes madam give me rice beans towel and one other part she goes to go and bring swallow no attention to details after 20 or i'm showing us little things no attention to details iron someone's cloth you go and burn the cloth you don't know how much the cloth is i say sir uh, i i decided I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um, doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do something i said okay let me try you i gave him a suit he returned it after like one month i don't know what he did on it i said thank you I gave it to somebody and I knew that even him, he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever. Let's stop saying God is not looking down on us. I'm showing you how God comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems. One day, I will cook for the governor. Who are you? With what you are doing now? You are not training yourself. The governor is not an idiot. The government house is not a zoo. If you want to cook well, you must be competent. Don't throw anything at anybody. Are we together now? How about Babas? How about Babas? How about Babas? There are people who pay as much as four, five thousand just to bob their hair. You think they are lavishing money, they are not ready to risk their hair. Are we together? You bring out a clipper, you don't even know whether it's sharp or not, you injure someone all around because you are babbing don't don't love these are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent it's not just shell 
it's not just oil and gas it's a determination to be thorough pay attention to details listen to the instructions no assumption You met somebody god is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of God. You look smart. Say, I'm not, I'm not a man of God. It doesn't mean you should be like that. You are smart. It's not about having money. Excellence. Your notebooks, you bind them well. If they are torn, you fix them. You fix your Bible. Are we together now? Your environment is neat. Very neat. We come into your kitchen, we see it neat. We come into your toilet, we see it neat. We come into the living room, we see it neat. That's excellence. Don't say we were not trained that way. That's why God is bringing you. Koinonia is a school and you are learning. Are we together? Is God helping us? The law of competence. How to be competent? Quickly. Now that I've challenged you on mediocrity. How do I become competent? Number one. You must have a reference. You cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference. A reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration. There must be someone, even if you plan to surpass that level, there must be a reference. Oh, I want to become a great worship minister. I have a reference like Don Moen. Now, that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder. When you become like Don Moen, you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down i want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible said ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you are you hearing what i'm saying now you must have a reference look at me hold on mike if you do not have a reference for ministry for business you want to become a great man of God like who who represents a model because that's the life you are going to understudy that's going to be your case study I want to become a business mogul like who you just mentioned one hilarious name how many videos of that person do you have have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person no competence and excellence is based on a reference I always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them If your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise number two how to be competent submit yourself to mentorship now that you have references I told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful trust me when I say this mentorship is not listening to a man mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character 
the traits the habits the principles and the secrets of a man submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets i take it again the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets of a man that's what you do when you are when you are receiving mentorship it's not just to go and package yourself for nothing no you sit down why is this person getting these results what is he doing that i'm not doing why does benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying is it that god is unfair to me god you called me to have the healing anointing but what is it about what's the difference between me and benny Hinn? then you study his prayer life you may never have that close access to him so you take advantage of his materials you know a lot of people call me and say sir i want you to mentor me can i be calling you anytime i say no he says so how do you mentor me i said that's why i'm teaching i'm teaching all the time there's koinonia radio our teachings are free listen they say i have it i say that's why you will never learn mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a tv program i've shared with a school of ministry students there are times it takes me three days to watch a one hour video three days to watch a one hour video because almost every two two minutes i'm stopping this man said this i have to listen that's mentorship you submit yourself to read between the lines ah he just said the power of god will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting how did he know was that the word of knowledge man this guy is powerful that's excitement that's not mentorship there are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets i was told i don't know if it's true or not but i was told one great man of god bishop um, abioye that one time one man said he wanted to you know find out the secret of his prayer life and he said fine let's pray and that they prayed after a long time the guy was yawning he wanted to sleep and then bishop abio told him okay we've given thanks now let's pray and the guy was almost dying <laughs> if that story is true that guy is not wise what do you think the anointing is you think the anointing is a charm even a charm go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down not giving miracles just push a man against gravity The secret of great men is in their stories. Pay attention when a great man is giving you examples. Pay attention when a great man is giving you stories. They are trying to bring a principle. Many people laugh at the stories. Parables and mysteries enshrined in stories. You can see the stories and laugh. And be raptured by the humor of the communication. And miss out on the meaning of it. I'm not against laughing, be happy. But you must be able to see when others are looking. Are we together? Submit yourself to mentorship. Number three, understand, believe, and live by the principles learned. How to be competent? One, you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship. Three, understand, believe, and live by the principles learned. It's not enough to just say, I know he told me this understand what you have been taught believe what you have been taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they have been told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete. You are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing. I say, no, I don't. Just because he made a mistake with one Greek word, he said, no, I have the, the modern lexicon. Or God, who, who did you get out of a wheelchair? Whose eye opened? That's the summary of this thing we are talking about. Whose eye opened? Whose life changed? You prophesied on somebody, everything was wrong. Sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are, you are you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down 
when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um, he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say kai this carpenter now wow but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coughing and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle years ago i was in abuja and i took a cab when i took a cab we we're discussing with the driver because sometimes i crack jokes with them say ah oh god you poor are enjoying this ah my chama and abba i'm not enjoying and then he, we're talking about money and then later the man said oh god you know say this money eh that the thing has a spirit and then i started listening to him he said do you know that he tried to build a house in abuja he tried and tried could not build but he said he saved and took the money out of abuja and in four months he built i discerned something that guy was saying he was communicating a deep mystery but because of his the barrier in communication are we together now listen if you don't have results in your life you are not a colleague to the person who has results sit down humble yourself believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything there are people who look and say ah, is this all there are people who have never seen but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the cloud and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is 
it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we are just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you Number one is, I'm the one teaching, listen. Number one is the law of relationships. Am I right? Number two, the law of value. Number three, the law of competence and excellence. Oh, that's true. How to be competent is part of it. Number four, the law of the mind. Jesus. The law of the mind. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Is God helping us? As I teach you, you should be seeing the loopholes. What laws you are not keeping that is deactivating the systems of success in your life. 23 verse 7, Proverbs. For as he thinketh in his heart, it's interchange with the word mind, so is he. Not so he will be. As you are thinking, you already are. The Bible creates your... Um, references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life a great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about god about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that i want all of us we've had several teachings here on the mind but it's important for you to understand the mind my life changed this law alone changed me like day and night the law of the mind that my the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind your mind is a miracle your mind is a gold mine it literally is literally is literally is write this down your mind 
is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden full stop write it down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seed planted and watered it will grow any seed that is planted and watered in agric science they teach that there are several kinds of soils i don't know if they've discovered others but as far as i remember they taught loamy soil clay soil what other one sandy soil and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them your mind is in is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because Sing you one more time. made you a way you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over That can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if i give you one billion and i make you mad have i blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind 
many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're oh man bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that i have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of god upon my life i'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable you never truly rise above your mindset you never truly rise underline the word truly you never truly rise above your mindset you may jump above it for a while but i assure you you will never truly rise your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset no matter how you manipulate it your mindset is what shows the quality of your life I wrote down something here I want you to listen to. I don't know if you can have the speed to write it, but listen first. If you attempt to change your life without changing your mind, your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind. You know how you pull a rubber ring? You can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that. The moment you push it, what happens? It returns back. That's how many people are. If you attempt to change your life, change your shoe, <laughs> change your suit, change your hair, change watch, change cars, and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful, you attempt to change them first without changing your mind. Your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people would think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months hollandis that you spend money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and I'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake. You think all you need is 100,000, 200,000. If it left you, it is not your hand that took it away. It's your mind that took it away. So you must correct something in your mind first before having it back. Are we together now? The most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind. I've seen people inherit money. I've seen people win lottery. Millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them. Having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive. It's not if you will have accident, it's when. Are we together now? 
You can manage to navigate your way, driving nonsense and arrive safely. And then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel. That's the day you die. You see that? And you can die the death of a fool. Listen. Packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration. Write it, Nigerians. Packaging without mental upgrade will lead to, I was almost saying like, lead to Nigeria, will lead to frustration. Packaging. You know what we call packaging? Paying attention to the physical form. Now, it is important. Appearance is important. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. So, don't, don't, ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe Oh, that great man is wearing Versace, is wearing Gucci, wearing Louis Vuitton. And me too, I want to get all these designers. I want to. And then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money. And then buy the shoe, buy the hair, buy everything. So physically you look. Let me tell you something. A great man and a great name are not the same. If your name is greater than you, you are in trouble. You must rise to get to the level of your name. I will make your name great does not mean you are great. It's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you. God makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up. Are we blessed? The law of the mind. There's too much packaging. Packaging. I know people who years ago, as students, were behaving like bankers. A student will buy a suit of 40,000. A student will not cook. No, 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 no. I don't have that time. I don't, uh, I don't like okra soup. Do you have that option? No. Whoever pays creates the rules. You cannot... Somebody cannot pay and you say, I don't like okra. There are people who try to live a life. You have not built your mind. There are so many people holding briefcases today. Arrogant people. You see them, they move around wearing suits, loitering our streets. You ask them, what do we do? Say, it depends on which, which company. I have five companies. Uh, I'm the CEO of this. What do you do? Well, we are into logistics. What do you mean logistics? Logistics is like saying, I'm studying science. What do you do? I'm into real, real estate. What do you know about real estate? Well, my uncle gave me one land to sell. You are not into real estate. Are we together now? I am this. I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of, in fact, by the grace of God, it's just that I don't want to talk too loud. I'm one of the top fashion people in this, this town. Who knows you? Who has patronized you? We make too much noise, whereas our results cannot match it. It is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise. I can cook for 1,000 people. Just give me this money. I know what I'm saying. Is it cooking? What is there in cooking? Then the food is smelling smoke all around. Burnt the meat. Burnt the food. Burnt everything. Packaging is good. But have content. Have content. Build your mind. Buy the truth. Buy books. Buy materials. I can spend the whole night teaching on the mind. Focus on changing your mind. Brothers and sisters, and I promise you, your life will change. Don't, don't get into this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have today is Gary, take it with honor. Use your 2,000 naira, buy a Bible, buy a book, read, pay for seminars, 
you are buying the truth you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira and um, you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really or oh, yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture you gave the guy two million do you know what he's going to say he will arrow he was begging you crying but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say if you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head go and check my bank account now that guy has not learned anything most people will use your help to prove that they had faith they didn't know you helped them 
me i don't pray i don't pray things just happen in my life i'm, I'm like that i mean all this i don't waste my time praying because you, somebody's you have been reaping somebody's seed the day your farm will be open you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush fallow what they call all those agri terminologies you have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals because you won't know who is really producing the result see they, let, let me let me encourage you everyone especially the workers in this ministry we share our success now i've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion if somebody says today apostle you are very anointed we share it i'm not anointed alone there were people who made that possible however be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward are you moving forward that's the danger with things like group work 10 people can do an assignment only two are serious the remaining two will sleep all of them will get nine over ten and the other person will come and say Kai, god is faithful you are not smart you are not learning in the office they give assignments and they come and give everybody bonuses and you are rejoicing yet you are not growing enjoy corporate success but vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor that your input is in that equation of success how is the mind renewed quickly if this is what we can take we we'll just stop here how is the mind renewed we need to learn how to transform the mind number one a recognition transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information You can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listening to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces uncommon leadership and i mean it on 
common leadership you know sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered the people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined to do it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now is a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 <sighs> thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray 
think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and i'm already seeing when the nations will come and worship ah. our hearts our prayer is to see the nations worship our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that we one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see i see pain in my family i see divorce i see the fact that i've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray we'll soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of value brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles, that's my life. I'm a sign and wonder. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders. ago years ago i would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seeing these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind I told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe it's in the glory 
and the power I see miracles signs and wonders I need the glory and the power I'm a living miracle and a sign of wonder Listen. You must stop looking down on yourself Many of these say, why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing That's why they execute it you imagine the vain thing. You imagine failure. I am nothing. I graduated with third class. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I can't speak well. I am too old. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. We are talking about the God of heaven. The one who can change people. Listen. Listen. Someone asked me one day and said, Apostle, God has blessed you so much with gifted people. How do you get them? And I told him, I see them. I see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures. You have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind. There are ladies here Whereas there is Esther in you, Vashti is calling you. Your destiny is calling you, but your yesterday is pulling you back. Remember you failed, you failed jam five times. What is the definition of a failure? Then you submit to it. The moment you submit to it, you destroy yourself. Listen, every great man is a man who changed his mind literally right from the time i was having bread bread i will i will cut the bread and put granite in the middle i knew that the day will come i will feed nations ask a jimmy we had a song ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that was our song that's the cry of my heart this ten shores and the islands will sing your light as it rises on to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was the day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um it's something I had seen in my spirit, I had seen in my mind. And I would not see it physically. And then the Lord gave me a very big miracle. When it manifested and I looked at it, it was exactly what I had seen in the spirit. And I said, this God, believe him. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to teach you the law of faith. I thought we would have more time. There are many laws to teach you. Brothers and sisters, when you activate these things, by next week when we are done I'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used I will lie down and pray on it 
when we are done that oil as it comes on your head you will activate systems my my listen my brother my sister it will shock you this life you see this life you see is a living miracle is a product of understanding this is what dominion is it's not guesswork i saw myself walking in the anointing i saw it i saw shadows killing the sick i saw it it's not some vain nonsense imagination i believe it the only audience in my vision yet i pulled it down and it will cause nations to see it you are the first to live in your future and then i speak it lord it will happen i will stand before kings they will come gentiles i saw a ministry that was zero zero death zero death owing no man nothing as a ministry dead or alive i saw it where did the money come from your mind there is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere there are people frowning my uncle didn't give me ten naira. nobody's uncle promises him anything leave all those dependence careless dependence everything comes from above it comes through men not from men from god through men to you men are not your source they are channels it comes from god we are going to pray is someone angry are you seeing how you have authorized i've only taught you four laws some of you have missed it in relationships some of you have missed it your gift is not speaking some of you mediocrity just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny see god instructed me to teach you this series because god wants to roll away shame shame he has taken all the pain you've taken all the lamentation you've taken all disappointment you've taken all my sorrow you have taken all my sadness you've taken all limitations Taking all the pain, you've taken all the shame. You have been very yours. The highest praise to the King. some of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they walked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth i want you to lift your voice and prophesy i found my way i found my way I found my way. I found my way out of misery.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I begin to live my life from the standpoint of these laws. I engage them. I receive grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. Grace to engage these laws. Grace to engage these laws. Yes, Lord. You are taking me from glory to glory. Are you not the Lord of all flesh? You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should bear. Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Bassi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singers. just pray for two minutes I want you to forget where you are now forget what you cannot eat now I want you to see a bright future draw from that future and start prophesying I'm coming to you I'm coming to you I'm coming to you say back up for football in the no devil stops me in the name of Jesus one last prayer our time is gone listen we are going to pray there is a spirit that can destroy all these things you have had it's called the spirit of fear apostle will it work are you joking the laws that founded the universe these are not scientific laws they were not invented no the very laws listen God told Job in chapter 38 verse 33 he says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth we are not talking about what we are guessing these are not cunningly devised fables these are the secrets 
the secret age long secret i like you right now to challenge the spirit of fear call it by name and drive it from your life i open the door and i ask you out of my life out of my life god has not given me the spirit of fear that goal is achievable for 
No, not for your small shop to doubt God. Not for your CGPA. Not for your graduation. Take away the fears and focus and say, Lord, I trust you. Let God be true and all men liars. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. I say it again. Every hanging prophecy that is over your life, that the devil is trying to make it look like it will not come to pass. I release an anointing now. I command that it comes to pass now. Let it come to pass. I release the grace for performance. The grace for performance. The grace for performance. I command it to come to pass. The grace for performance. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise for tonight. We honor you because you are building us. We will experience strange dimensions of triumph. In the name of Jesus. You are standing here tonight and you are saying, Man of God, I do not have a relationship with Jesus. I will not tell lies. I see the move of the Spirit in this place and I need Jesus. Please keep standing, everyone. Our time is gone. We're rounding up. I need Jesus. Or you are saying, Man of God, as I heard you speak, I knew that I was lacking in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have come here tonight with my heart open. I've been lying to myself, but tonight I'm ready to tell the truth. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, online, inside, wherever you are, our time is gone. I want to count one to three. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't wait for anyone. Make your way out quickly. Make your way out quickly. Are there people coming? Clear the way for them. Somebody has got to be convicted of the spirit. Young, old, make your way quickly. There are people coming outside. Please clear the way for them. Ushers, help them. Overflow, one, two, three. If you are coming, run, 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 run. Young and old, run quickly, please. Keep coming. God bless you. Our time is gone, but we must give you an opportunity for a fresh start tonight. Man of God, I want to rededicate my life. I'm tired of living my life my own way. Make your way to the front. No matter the limitations, God is giving you a new beginning. Are you coming? Don't let your friends stop you. Run, join them quickly. Hallelujah. If you're joining them quickly, just join them and then we'll pray. Those in front, I honor you. Thank you so much. Lift your right hand and say this after me. Convincingly, truthfully, you're not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God from now and forever. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. I pray that this will begin, the, you start the beginning of a new life. I command every spirit that is not of God to leave you. And I decree and declare that beginning from today, the life of God finds expression in you. I cause everything that does not belong to Christ. I release you to serve the Lord. I declare that your sins are forgiven and the Lord gives you a new beginning. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much and congratulations. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you just follow him. They'll have your details very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Just two announcements for tonight. The first announcement, aside from Honorable and his wife, if this is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia Overflow 1, 2, 3, I know there are a number of people. Please, you will need to run. Aside from those coming out, wherever you are, come. I want to bless you. I want to speak over your life. Koinonia, honor them. Those connecting with us for the first time online, we love you, we bless you. Are you coming quickly, please? Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget, 
to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye